Hi. Hello. Uh, please introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Tarek. I'm uh, from Ulita. I'm a, a strategic director for marketing. And we are here at Display Week in Los Angeles. Hi. I'm Kelsey Woolley. I'm the director of North American Operations. And uh, we're here uh, showcasing our unique lithography solution for photonic devices. So what is unique about what you do? Great here? question. Yeah, so what we do is uh, we're doing a uh, mask-based interference type of lithography that's called Talbot uh, that's able to produce very high resolution structures in very large fields and to do this very quickly and very inexpensively. So we're able to image an entire 140 by 140 millimeter exposure field in one uh, single exposure providing a seamless uh, patterning capability for our customers and the resolution can get down to um, 60 nanometer half pitch so DUV capabilities and these wafers are running um, 30 wafers per hour up uh, up from there. So it's a very fast, very low cost. Uh, our, our tools um, are far less expensive than a projection type of uh, structure. And, or sorry, platform. Yeah, <laughs> just making sure no, sorry, no. Dark's no, not getting uh, yeah. Yeah, stuck in the microphone. So yeah. uh, we, we sell to a lot of AR, VR, laser customers, um, telecom gradings. Any, any sort of R&D that's based around photonic structures or diffraction gratings, uh, polarizers, um, you name it. Uh, is this stuff that has to do with uh, displays or chipsets or both or Displays, where does it go? yes, displays. So the, in order for the mass-based interference to work, it needs to be a, a pattern that has periodicity. So it needs to have something that is replicated over, over the exposure field in order to get the high enough resolution. So we're not printing IC circuits, but we're printing line space structures or lattices or holes or pillars or other uh, large area periodic patterns. And this is crucial for the future of displays or for what? Oh, certainly, certainly. So, you know, our business is built around the ability to make these, these large field patterns for a fraction of the cost of some of the other solutions. We're much faster, much less expensive uh, than, say, an e-beam uh, competitor, and it's much more reproducible and much more reliable than a nano imprint solution. And um, Can that's you talk where. About the e -beam? Yes. Is that what everybody's using, or what is the e-beam? Depends on what everyone's doing. Uh, people use uh, e-beam when they don't need, or if they don't want uh, mask-based work, or if they need to do uh, very small patterns. Uh, e-beam is okay for that, it's good for R&D. But e-beam doesn't scale, and so we get a lot of customers that have been using e-beam for years, they developed a product that's at the maturity level that they want to take it into manufacturing and they need something, some sort of lithography solution that can, that can take them there. So we usually uh, come in at that point where they're ready to start uh, making more structures faster and cost becomes important. What's the Fable R, Fable X, Fable S? Is that your big machine? They are. So they're, they're the three uh, tools that we sell. The, the Fable R, the R stands for research-based. Uh, it's a tabletop, which we've got a picture of over here. Yeah, this one? Uh-huh. So you get all the, the benefits of the optics, but it's, it's a very low entry cost point and uh, good for proof of concept for, for ensuring that you can build your, your full flow based on this type of so, lithography. So who's going to be uh, buying these? So we get anywhere from universities all the way up to large customers that need to do R&D first. So this utilizes the DTL patterning, but it's very straightforward, very small footprint, very low entry price to see that that's, that's the technology they want to scale with. When they're ready to scale, uh, we have the Fable X. I'll pull this out for you. Yeah which uh, does, does the, the, the same high resolution optics, but it starts adding uh, larger wafer sizes and automation. Um, so you, you get a front end robot that does cassette in, cassette out handling. Uh, you have a post exposure bake, for example. Uh, it becomes much faster, much higher throughput, much more reliable with a, with a semi-automation system. And then when customers are ready to go all the way to 300 millimeter, we have a step and repeat system. 
So the unique thing about uh, this tool is it takes that 140 by 140 millimeter exposure field and it step and repeats it over the larger wafer. So you're able to utilize the whole wafer uh, with that large seamless exposure field. And so this is full automation. So foop in, foop out, cassette in, cassette out. Also automatic uh, mask handling. So you don't have to touch masks. It's really uh, set for high volume. When people make millions and billions of displays, do they use stuff that could be related to this? Or Yes. Mm -hmm. Or uh, are you doing lithography in a way that's unique, nobody else does Correct. exactly that? Yes. Are they, do you have many customers already, or you're new in this? Yes, so Ulitho has been around for about 10 years, and has been growing over those 10 years, where the first models were only the R, the tabletop and just, um, kind of a university R&D focused tool. And then in the last five years or so, we've come out with the X uh, for the customers that are ready to, to scale to that level. And then um, due to the, the, the drive of the market, we have um, just you know in the last year started offering the 300 millimeter platform. So uh, can you explain a little bit to, let's say, uh, non-expert how does this become a display? Yes. Where does so, it go? yeah. So it depends on the, the display. So I am a uh, my background's in augmented reality. So I'll speak to augmented reality. Like a, um, uh, we have a lot of customers that use this for waveguides. So for example, if your waveguide is based on diffraction, you would need to create line space diffractive gratings on the surface of your your eyepiece. And so those gratings are line space nanostructures at a certain pitch, a certain size, to control uh, the light input and output over the that large space of eyepiece. So these line space structures become extremely important to fill uh, that eyepiece so that these are, yeah, these are the diffractive elements. So we control the pitch, the size, the grating orientation um, that, that go into uh, the design of making a really good augmented reality wave guide. It could be a company like Vuzix, maybe. Yes, definitely. Maybe it's working with, could be working with a company like you. Uh, people who make people AR, who make VR, AR, which VR. is going to be huge. Yes, a lot of customers. This is a, a booming industry. And other markets? Yes. Does so it go in projectors? Does that work for that? Uh, yeah, so we use, uh, we have some customers that are in like micro LEDs, uh, anything bigger than that, uh, you know, they can use typical mask aligners for that type of lithography. It's really the micro level uh, where uh, mask aligners can no longer do that type of lithography, that they start to have to look at nano imprint or projection, and we're a lower cost solution to that. And so we have some, have a, have a market space there where providing solutions in like holes and pillars that go into uh, micro LED devices too. So uh, somebody's asking, is your market restricted like selling into China? No. No? No. So we are a Swiss based company. So we which is neutral. Which is neutral. So we sell worldwide. Um, over half of our machines are actually in China. All right. What am I seeing here? Yeah, so this is a four in, or sorry, a six inch wafer with a four inch exposure field. Our exposure fields can be much larger than that. But these are just holographic elements. And so these are those diffractive gratings that I was speaking about, that they're nanostructures that kind of capture the LEDs in this, in this display and it just light up and uh, make it glow. So we have customers too that uh, use our tools for uh, creating holographic elements. Nice. And what's the Swiss flag? So is that uh, the headquarters? Yes, yes. We've got our Swiss flag here. All right. That <laughs> is, uh, uh, they're, they're based in Kirchdorf, which is uh, about 25 minutes out of Zurich. So all of our tools are manufactured in Switzerland. So it's precision. It's precision, it's yes. Microelectronics, it's micro technology stuff. I mean, that's what the Swiss kind of say sometimes. Yes. And, and then there's office in the US? Correct. So um, I run the, the US uh, operations, and our office is up near Seattle in Redmond, Washington. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. No. Hello, I'm Mr. Beast. No, I'm not Mr. Beast, actually. But if I was Mr. Beast and if I was sending you a bunch of money, I would use WISE. WISE is a really smart way to send money around the world 
tiny little fees. Check out my video, a seven minute video where I try to explain some more. It works in hundreds of countries. Every time you go to a different country, use your Wise card or use your Android Pay, your, your uh, Apple Pay to do all your payments with a tiny little conversion pay. Uh, fee. If you have some customers in different countries, they can send you money to local bank accounts in the US and Europe, all over the world. You can get local bank account details. They transfer tiny little fees. Don't use PayPal anymore. Don't use Western Union. And don't use your bank to send money because it's surprising, but you wouldn't know maybe, but they take fees that are gigantic, that are pretty big. Just use the wise. It's smart.